Let's discuss Git work trees. So imagine you're working on some code for some new feature. You've added some files and maybe added others. Your boss comes to you and asks for some urgent hotfix or code change. Usually what you would do is you get stash and then you create a hotfix branch, work on some changes, push your code and then switch back to your feature branch. And then you would do something like git stash apply and bring back your code and continue working. Well, you don't need to do that. So Git has a feature called work tree, which allows you to have multiple instances of the same Git repository. To demo this work tree, I created a simple Rust project and I cloned it into a directory on my machine here. Now let's create a new branch called new feature and we can use git checkout dash b new feature. Now, if we do git status, you see that we have nothing yet changed. So if we try to edit our code and let's say we're working on a new feature here, we can say, for example, print a new line and this is a new feature. Now, imagine you got an urgent request to fix something in prod. What would you typically do is you would go back and you would do something like git stash and then you would do git checkout dash b hotfix and then you basically work on your fix and then push that. Once you complete your work, you then would switch back to your feature branch using git checkout new feature and then you would do git stash apply. Now you have your code back and you can continue working on your feature. A better way to handle this is using git work trees. So if we check the help of work trees, you see we have a bunch of options here. Git work tree add, list, lock, move, remove, etc. First option we're going to look into is git work tree list, which will list our work trees. You see that we only have one at this stage. And basically you can think of this as one instance of your repo. Now to create another instance of our project, we can use git work tree add and then in this case, I'm just using work trees as a directory to store the code. And then I'm putting hotfix as a way to indicate that the new code is going to be for the hotfix. And then I'm saying start with the main branch. If we hit enter here, you see that it created a new work tree for us. Now, if we do git work tree list, you see that we have two different work trees. Now, if we list our files, you see that we have this new directory here called work trees. And if we cd into it, you see that we have a hotfix directory and inside of it, we have our project. This essentially created a copy of our project. So if we look into the project and we go to our main, we see that the code we added in the other branch is no longer here. This is simply the main branch. So now we can switch between the new feature branch that we were working on and then this instance of the project that we created through the work tree. So now let's say we're going to fix our problem here and push the code and then go back to our feature. So let's switch to a hotfix branch here. And, and then let's say we want to fix the problem here by saying print some hotfix here. And let's assume that this fixed the problem. Now, if we do git status, we see some changes and let's say we want to do git add dot and git commit hotfix and then we want to push that git push origin hotfix. This will push our code to GitHub and then we can review it and merge it and then go back to our feature. Now in GitHub, we can create a PR and then review the code, then merge it. And then after that, we can just go back and work on our feature. Now here we can assume that we no longer need to work on this hotfix instead of this work tree. So we can switch back to the other work tree and continue working. Now to switch back, we can go two directories up and now we're inside our original code, which has the new feature branch. Here, if we do git status, you see that we have all our code that we worked on originally. So if we check the code and let's say go to main, you see that we have this line which indicates that this was the feature that we're working on. Now, one thing to notice here is that this work trees directory is still here and it has a copy of our project. So it's a very good idea for us to just ignore this file by saying um, work trees. 
and this will make sure that we never push this code anywhere. Now let's say we finished working on a new feature and then we commit the code. Now what we need to do is go back to the main branch, pull the hotfix and merge it with this feature and then we can push the code to GitHub. Here let's do git checkout main and then git pull origin main. This will pull the hotfix that we had already. Then we can do git checkout new feature and then we can do git merge with main. Here you see that we have a conflict. So if you go to vim and go to main, you see that we have a conflict here. So we can fix that quickly. And then now the code is ready. So if you do git status, we see that we have some changes. So we can do git add dot and git commit fix conflict, for example, and then git push origin new feature. This will push the code to GitHub and now we can create a PR for it and then merge it. And here you can see that we have two work trees. So let's say we want to remove one. So we can say get work tree, remove hotfix, and this will remove the second work tree here. So if we list it again, we see that we only have one. Now, if you want to learn about the different options that work tree provides, you can go to the help page here. And that would show you all the things that Worktree provides and can do. Or you can simply go to this web page, which is official Git documentation. And you can also see all the commands and things that you can do with Worktrees. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.